The Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine uh, was granted to a research and awarded to a research team that assessed the oxygen sensing of cells. Our cells can adapt to different levels of oxygen and that has uh, a lot of consequences for the normal physiology but also for the pathophysiology. And they explicitly, this picture was shamelessly stolen from the press release from the Nobel Committee and they focus on wound healing and say the influence of oxygen plays a vital role in wound healing. So that's a perfect introduction and let's have a look into the role of oxygen in wound healing. And as you can tell, this picture looks quite, quite busy and complicated. It gives you a top-line overview over all the various processes in which oxygen plays a predominant role to maintain, to kickstart or to control these processes. Let's start clockwise at um, 11 o'clock energy en generation. Every form of um, calories that you might intake over the course of the day need to be translated into a molecular form that can be utilized by our cells. It's ATP, and this oxidation of glucoses requires large amounts of oxygen. Then, secondly, we're now at 2 o'clock. Building the extracellular matrix can't happen without oxygen. Oxygen is required to fuel all the enzymes building the matrix, the scaffold for further cell growth. And secondly, they need oxygen as a substrate, as this is part of the construction scheme of certain proteins. Cell signaling processes. If you think of the millions of different processes that take place in wound healing, from cell building, cell differentiation, neoangiogenesis, epithelialization, closing the wound, fighting bacteria, all that stuff that need to be um, orchestrated in a way that every piece falls into the perfect place in the wound healing picture. And this steering, when does a process start, when it stops, when it's slowed down, and when does the next uh, process step in, this all is handled by substances, cell signaling substances, which also require oxygen to work. And lastly, seven o'clock infection control. If a wound occurs right in the first minute, a lot of pathogens comes in, bacteria, dirt, foreign substances, everything like that. And this, of course, means a huge risk for the body. So the body has an unspecific immune response before the antibody system sets in. The body secretes a lot of so-called reactive oxygen species. And these are, let's say, the very aggressive troops of our defense system. And they kill almost everything that is not identified as a body's own substance. And re uh, these reactive oxygen species, if words have a meaning, require oxygen. One can tell that neutrophils, playing a role in this first line of defense, require more than 200 times more oxygen in a wound than in a healthy body. So this picture gives you really a 360-degree insight into the role of oxygen in wound healing, and this is why we think improving the oxygenation in wounds will add a huge benefit to patients suffering from chronic wounds. So let, let's talk about that. Could you tell us what happens if there's a lack of oxygen in wound? Clearly oxygen is important, but what happens if there's a lack of it? Yeah, the first paper that we could found comes from 1987. So it's not, not truly cutting-edge technology, but it's um, interesting to see that uh, more than 30 years ago, scientists have already known about the influence of oxygen uh, on wound healing. What they did was the following. They had a sample of, I think, 160 or 170 patients, and they tried to identify predictors for further healing outcomes. So is it the age of the wound? Is it uh, the treatment regimen? Is it the age of the patients or whatsoever? And one of these parameters they assessed um, to see whether there's a correlation between healing outcome and this parameter was oxygen. All patients received the same wound treatment um, regimen and same products, and then they stratified the sample into three different groups. We have a group with a normal oxygen supply in the tissue. We have a middle layer 
and we have a group with a very low oxygen availability. As you can see on the left, this is less than 40% um, of the normal value, so 60% below the standard level. And interestingly, no matter what type of wound they treated and how old the wound was and all these other factors, interestingly, they found that in the group of patients with a normal oxygen concentration, 95% of all patients made it to full wound healing, whilst in the group of um, the poor patients with the extreme low oxygen concentration, only 3% of all treated wounds were healed. So we have very clear evidence that the availability of oxygen to wound tissue plays a predominantly important role on final healing outcome. What can we do to resolve the problem? What can we do about hypoxia? So hypoxia, as we call the lack of oxygen in the tissue, can be treated via um, different pathways. One idea is to improve oxygen from the inside. We all breathe in, we breathe out, and on a daily basis we consume I'm not sure whether you are um, aware of the enormous amounts of oxygen we consume. It's 600 to 800 liters of oxygen that every one of us uses on a daily basis. And if we improve the oxygen supply from the inside, this is of course helpful. And you do that in wound healing, for example, by compression therapy in venous leg ulcers, by revascularization in people with a compromised arterial blood supply. All these measures account for an improvement of oxygen supply from the inside. But we know, and this is why we are here, why we have chronic wounds, that this is sometimes not sufficient to bring a wound to healing. So the basic idea of granulox is how can we manage to take a small portion of the oxygen from the ambient air, and we are surrounded by 21% in, uh, oxygen in the air that we breathe. Why not taking one portion of that oxygen and bring it down to the wound base, where it's so desperately needed for the cells to start the healing process? And unfortunately, there's a problem. And the problem is water. Oxygen is a gas, and a gas cannot permeate through water at least not in sufficient amounts. If you calculate it down, it's quite a complex formula with a diffusion coefficient and multiple factors and so forth. If you calculate it down, as a thumb rule, you can say 0.1 millimeter of a liquid layer, which is the normal wound exudate, or the liquid in the interstitial space in between the cells, 0.1 millimeter of a liquid film hinders 99% of oxygen going through this barrier. So, in fact, it's a perfect diffusion barrier. If we keep our wounds moist, and that's a prerequisite of modern wound healing, then it means, on the other hand, that we hinder the oxygen from going down to the wound base. So we have rivalizing goals. And the idea how to overcome that, and the idea of the scientists in Wittenherdecke is, it's quite old, it's 46 million years old, because then it took place that nature invented this fantastic molecule, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the molecule that gives our blood the red color. It is trapped in the red blood cell, it has a fascinating structure and an even more fascinating property, because it can reversibly bind to oxygen. It picks up oxygen in high concentration areas, for example, in your lungs, when you breathe in, and hemoglobin streams via the bloodstream through the alveoles in your lung, then it picks up all the oxygen it can get, goes down through the arterial system and the circulatory system, and delivers the oxygen to your muscles, to your brain, to all the other cells which require oxygen. And then the so-called so unloaded hemoglobin returns to the lung and picks up the next portion. That happens in every one of us, at least as long as we are alive, and the same can happen in a wound. And this shows you how granulox works. That the starting situation, we have a significant wound, I admit, with an even more significant level of exudate, but just to, to illustrate how it works. In the first step, we spray granulox, and the hemoglobin that is contained in the granulox spray starts immediately binding to oxygen. So the molecule picks up four molecules of oxygen. 
And then diffusion sets in. The normal physical process of, um, of um, equilibrating different concentration levels and balancing concentration levels sets in and leads to hemoglobin diffusing down to the wound base. At the wound base, we have a very low concentration of oxygen, like, for example, in your muscle cells. What happens? The oxygen is released from hemoglobin and goes right into the cells, which can take advantage of this oxygen supply by starting the healing process. And then the empty or partially unloaded hemoglobin returns again to the surface, and in a revolving cycle and system, the game starts again. So we have a cycled system in which every molecule of hemoglobin can take several loads of oxygen and transports a lot of oxygen down to the wound base. On a mathematical basis, one can calculate that one gram of hemoglobin transports one liter of oxygen within just one day. So that's quite effective. And although this looks, I think, a bit complicated in theory, in practice, it's absolutely easy. Let's consider this a typical wound. I have to admit it's a rather big wound. We have the wound base here, where the cells require oxygen for healing. We have an immense amount of wound exudate and we have oxygen in the surrounding air, and we have granulox. And you spray then granulox on the surface of the wound. Normally, you don't need to spray that much, as hopefully the typical wound is a bit smaller than this one. And what you can see is that the hemoglobin immediately start mixing with the water. And I will not stir this, and I will not shake it, I will leave it as it is, and over the next couple of minutes, you will see how the concentration of hemoglobin mixes perfectly and equilibrates perfectly with the water. And wherever you see red color in this water bowl, you see oxygen transport capacity. As now, we have something like a, like a bucket brigade for oxygen. There are different layers of hemoglobin molecules in this water bowl, and everyone can pick up oxygen, hand it over to the colleague, and so we have a bucket brigade that helps transport oxygen from the surface down to the wound base, where it immediately accelerates healing. So this theory sounds great. It's, it's really cool technology, but do we have any data that supports this mode of action in Granulox? Yes, we have, and I assume I, I won't be here if we hadn't. <laughs> so let's have a look at, at the scientific um, side of this uh, nice theory. This experiment, again, is quite, a, quite an old one. It was carried out in the 1960s, but um, published in Science, so quite a high, highly reputed, high-impact magazine. The researcher did a quite simple experiment. Uh, we have two compartments, one compartment filled with oxygen, one compartment without oxygen. I think it was nitrogen that was in. And both compartments were separated by a membrane soaked in water. And the theory is oxygen cannot permeate through water, and so normally you shouldn't expect finding significant amounts of oxygen in the lower compartment. And so it was. Although the concentration is quite high and one would expect an, um, an, an equilibrium after a short time, nothing happened as the waterly soaked membrane locked away the oxygen and hindered it from passing through. And then Scholander, the researcher, repeated this experiment with a slight deviation. He added hemoglobin. All the other settings were kept exactly the same and he found out that eight times the amount of oxygen could be transported and was transported if hemoglobin was added to this membrane. So that's the first in vitro trial proving that hemoglobin keeps its ability of transporting oxygen even when taken out of the body, when taken out of the erythrocytes, when freed from any other molecule, just the pure hemoglobin molecule itself is so diligently working that it 
continues transporting oxygen even outside the body. A leopard can't change its spots, and so can't hemoglobin. We repeated this experiment in a little bit more sophisticated way by using a novel technology called photo-optoacoustic tomography. And this technology gives you a three-dimensional picture of a real-life wound of a patient. This is a cross-section through a venous leg ulcer of a patient. The study was conducted at the University Hospital of Essen. You can look down into tissue depth of about two centimeters, and for you, important to understand is that blue indicates areas with a low oxygen concentration, and red and white with a very high oxygen concentration. This picture was taken before the first application of any substance. So the patient came into the wound clinic, gave his consent, and then the picture was taken using this novel device. And as you can tell, large areas are blue. So obviously, this patient is suffering from a hypoxic tissue condition, which hinders his wounds from healing. And then granulox was applied, and 20 minutes later, the, the same picture um, methodology was used again. And as you can see, huge areas now have turned into red color, clearly signaling that the oxygen concentration has increased dramatically. And that was, rep uh, was repeated in a couple of patients and further on published in a scientific journal, as it was the first time that it could be shown that the external application of an oxygen carrier helps to improve the tissue oxygenation even in deeper tissue layers. So that, that's really amazing. Could you talk about what this means uh, from a clinical pers perspective? What's the, the experience from a patient's perspective? Thank you. It's time for some nice pictures from uh, dramatic wounds. And I want to share with you a case that was presented by Professor Chumpon from the Mahidol University, the Ramatibodi Hospital in Thailand. And Professor Chumpong presented this case at this year's Yuma in, in, in June in, in Gothenburg. So it's a brand new case and, as, as we think, a quite dramatic case. It gives you the dramatic story of a 54-year-old man suffering from diabetes, very poorly controlled. He had several episodes of um, wound reoccurrences and healing episodes, and then they had to unfortunately amputate his third toe on his left foot and did uh, some surgical debridement. And after the debridement, they could um, see that the wound was undermining the tissue, that it was in fact a much bigger wound than it appeared when the patient uh, was seen at the first time in the hospital. So this is a dramatic situation, and I think I'm, I'm not exaggerating if I say that most of these patients are directly referred to a surgeon for conducting an amputation if you show up with such a wound in a European hospital setting. But Professor Chumpong decided to give his treatment idea a chance and to save the limb of the patient. So he started meticulously cleaning the wound using granulodacin, using granulox, and after eight days, one could see that the amputation wound of the third toe is not as dramatic as the other wound, but even after just eight days, you can spot that uh, there are signs of a very vital granulation tissue. Some tissue building processes have already set in, as you see this very lively, red, well-perfused tissue. One month later, you had this sequence of pictures, and it goes without saying that specifically in this huge wound at the sole of his foot, the tissue quality has uh, dramatically improved. We see a lot of granulation tissue. You can't see any exposed tendons or bones any longer. So the tissue has grown over these structures, which is absolutely important to prevent from, from any infections of the bones or so on. And the amputation wound at the third toe has already fully closed. And just two months later, uh, the patient was sent home with a fully closed wound after just 60 days. And Professor Chumpong, that's his original presentation from, from this year's Yuma, said this is the power of 2G. This is granulox 
and granodacin that made it possible for this patient to walk home on his own feet. I think, really touching case. Yeah, that's really impressive. Uh, what about broader evidence? Do we, what, what does the clinical data supporting the technology look like? Yeah, as you can tell, it's a medical device class three, so the requirements from the authorities are quite high to prove the efficacy and the safeness of the product. And when we applied for registration in 2011, we conducted an RCT and randomized controlled trial at the Czech University Hospital in Prague at the Charles University. The test and the trial was conducted on patients suffering from venous-like ulcerations. You see the typical inclusion criteria. But there's one significant difference to most of the studies you might have seen in your past. We decided to focus only on hard-to-heal or impossible-to-heal wounds, meaning all patients that meet the inclusion criteria in terms of wound definition, age of the wound and so forth, were hospitalized for two weeks. And during this phase of hospitalization, they received best practice therapy of this hospital, including wound cleaning, antimicrobial treatment, uh, adaptive wound dressings, and all the other factors that play a role in a successful wound healing story. And of course, many of them improved. And many of them responded to this treatment regime. And those patients were excluded from the study. And only those who did not uh, responded to the th therapy and have not shown any signs of improvement were then randomized and randomly divided into two groups. One group continued receiving the ineffective and ineffective standard of care treatment they did not respond to, and the other group received the same treatment plus hemoglobin spray. So that was the only difference between the two groups. After 13 weeks, they analyzed the difference in wound size and the wound size reduction. As you can see, the placebo group, who received only standard of care plus saline solution, had even a slight increase in wound size, perhaps due to a lack of care or so at home, whilst the group with the hemoglobin spray had a wound size reduction by 53%. In total, that gives you a difference of 74% between standard of care alone and standard of care plus hemoglobin spray in this subset of heart to heal patients. That was, of course, absolutely amazing. And the second thing also took us by surprise. More as a standard question, we asked patients to report their pain level. This is normally a standard question in, in every questionnaire and, and case report form. And surprisingly, we found that the patients receiving granulox had a significant decrease in their perceived pain level. It went down from six, which is quite painful on this scale from zero to ten. You know, six is, wow, that, that is something. And it went down to below three. So besides the healing and the acceleration of healing, we could significantly improve patients' life quality. The regulators were so impressed with the data that they allowed us to commercialize the product starting from April 2012. And then we started first in Germany and then we expanded to other territories. And one of these territories was UK. And so we conducted the first evaluation uh, in a care setting in the north of England. And the first evaluation was conducted on patients suffering from diabetic foot ulcerations. All these patients, as it was just an evaluation or a retrospectively controlled evaluation, received their standard of care and a subgroup of 20 patients was offered receiving granulox on top of their treatment. And now comes a graph that gives me goosebumps. It shows you the number of wounds remaining unhealed after a certain period of time. So on the x-axis, the horizontal axis of the diagram, you see the time proceeding, and on the y-axis, the number of wounds not being healed. The smaller the number, the better the outcome. And look at this. The control group, with the indicated as the black line, of course has an improvement, and 11 patients still had their wound after 28 weeks, meaning 9 out of 20 had full wound healing. 
compared to 16 out of 20 in the granulox group. You can say that after 16 weeks, the granulox group had twice as many full wound closures than the control group, which is a significant difference. The steeper the curve is and the lower the number, the better the healing outcome for each individual patient which has, who has a fully closed wound. Let's kick off the next study. And this time we focus on patients with chronic wounds in general. 50 patients, this time included receiving standard of care, and 50 with um, standard of care plus granulox. And this group comprised wounds of all different etiologies, venous leg ulcers, arterial leg ulcers, DFUs, burn wounds, all wounds just characterized by a delayed healing pattern and slowed down healing speed. And the results were as astonishing as they were with the DFU group. Again, we have far more wounds experiencing fully healing and fully closing. And after eight weeks, we can say that we have more than twice as many wounds fully healed. After just eight weeks, which is phenomenal. And looking at this, we said, OK, let's focus on sloughy wounds, wounds which are difficult to treat and expensive to treat as it's required to meticulously remove the, the slough layer on top of the wound. This time, 200 patients were evaluated, showing the same effect. So although the healing speed differs from wound type to wound type, what you all know, that a DFU takes longer to heal than a burn wound, for example, the difference that granulox makes and the additional benefit can be proved in almost in, in every case and in every study. It simply accelerates healing. So obviously granulox has uh, the potential to be really impactful to the patient, but what does it mean for our customers, the healthcare providers? What can we do for them? They save time. They save time to bring wounds to a full healing, and this means they save money as well. If you need just 50% of the time to heal a wound, you need fewer dressing materials, you have to spend less money for doctors' or nurses' attention, and finally, you have less complications like amputations or unplanned surgical interventions for surgical debridements, for example. And we um, calculated that down, and that was part of some pharmacoeconomic considerations we had. On average, based on the UK, care system, we can save between 850 and more than 2,000 pounds per wound treatment if we include granulox to the therapeutic pathway. And this is so impactful, improve quality of care and at the same time save money that a group of experts from German-speaking countries um, yeah, assembled and thought of a treatment pathway that was published in the Journal of Wound Management, and they started with developing an acronym for the new standard of the topical treatment of chronic wounds, calling it MOIST, and for the first time, oxygen gets the role it really deserves. Besides moisture and infection control and tissue management and all that that we already know, oxygen now is part of these um, subset of points that we need to consider if we want to make sure our patients receive best level of care. In parallel, a group of, Eng of UK experts worked also on a treatment algorithm. And interestingly, although it was just a parallel work, they came out with almost an, an identical recommendation of how to implement granulox in their daily work. And what they said is, follow this treatment pathway Treat every wound as if you normally treat that wound. So start with diagnosis, um, make sure you have an adequate causal therapy of the underlying disease. This is, of course, always important to consider. Clean the wound, but if you notice that the wound is on a non-successful healing pathway, it's slowed down or stalled by a definition of less than 40% size reduction in four weeks, that's an very important point, 40% in four weeks is a good statistical predictor for a wound with severe healing problems over time. And if this is the case, then add granulox. And after four weeks, reassess the healing speed. If the healing speed is now higher than before, well, perfect, then continue using granulox until for wound closure. And if not, then you have to reassess your treatment, reassess your treatment regimen, as then, obviously, 
something goes wrong with the overall healing.